You've experienced changing the view to the home view, and you've used a few of the commands in the navigation bar. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to customize the home view, you'll learn about the view cube, and you'll learn a few more commands in the navigation bar. By default, the home view command sets the view to the standard isometric view, but you can modify the home view to any view you prefer. First, I'll show you how to use the view cube, and then I'll show you how to change the home view. The view cube can be used to change the current view in the graphics area. All you have to do is click a section of the view to change the view. When the view is a planar view, you can click the arrows above the cube to rotate the view 90 degrees. The standard isometric view is the view from the corner of the top, front, right side of the view cube. And currently, this is the same view as the home view. If you select a different section of the cube, and then click the home view icon, the view returns to the isometric view. One difference between selecting the corner of the cube and selecting the home view icon is the home view icon zooms into the part, while the corner of the cube doesn't zoom into the part. You can control whether or not the home view zooms into the part, and you can specify the view itself. Take a moment to practice using the view cube and the home view icon. When you're finished, we'll set the view to a view other than the isometric view. To change the home view, set the view to a new view, and zoom out a little so that you can see the differences in the settings. Now right click on the home view icon, and then highlight set current view as home. You have two options for setting this view as the home view, so let's see how each setting works. First select the fit to view option. Now click the home view icon. The view zooms in to fit the part in the graphics area. Now zoom out and we'll use the other option. Right click on the home view icon, highlight set current view as home, and then select fixed distance. Now zoom into the part, and then click the home view icon. As you can see, the fixed distance option sets the home view to a constant distance. The factory set home view is the view we'll use in this course. It's the view from the corner of the top, front, and right side of the view cube, and the zoom option is fit to view. Go ahead and set the home view to this setting. This is the default setting for the home view, so if you didn't modify the home view, you don't have to modify it now. This view is typically called the standard isometric view, so from this point on in the course, we'll refer to it as the isometric view. Now let's look at the free orbit command in the navigation bar. When you click the command, the orbit symbol is displayed on the screen. With this command, you can place your pointer inside the orbit symbol and rotate the view. Hold your left mouse button down while you drag your pointer on the screen. To center the rotation on the end of the pin, select the end of the pin. Now the center of rotation is on the end of the pin. You can also rotate the view in a plane by placing your pointer near one of the axes and then drag your left mouse button across the view. To rotate the view in the current plane, place your pointer on the outside of the symbol, and then drag your pointer. To exit the command, type the escape key. Earlier we brought up a very important question. What is the difference between a profile and a sketch? And in this lesson you'll learn the difference. You'll also learn how to use the trim command. Start by opening a new standard part. Don't save the file because you're going to use it to practice and then discard it later. Now draw four horizontal lines. The first line will snap to the horizontal position, and you'll see the horizontal constraint just below your pointer. Click to accept the position, and type the escape key to end line mode. Now draw the second line. You can use the L key on your keyboard to evoke the command. This time the parallel constraint appears below the first line and your pointer. As you saw earlier, Inventor is visually asking if you want to make the second line parallel to the first line. Click to accept the constraint and the end position of the line. Type the escape key, and then type the L key to start a new line. 
and continue this process until you have four lines spaced about as I'm doing here. Now draw vertical lines. The first line is automatically constrained with the perpendicular constraint. While you draw the vertical lines, perpendicular and parallel constraints will automatically be added. Now you're going to use the trim command to trim all the lines except the rectangles in the corners. Use a mouse gesture to launch the trim command. And then move your pointer over a line you want to trim. The section of the line turns into a dashed line, which is the part that will be trimmed. Click your left mouse button and continue trimming all the lines until you have four rectangles. When you're finished, you should have four rectangles in the graphics area. Now change the view to the isometric view. Finish the sketch, and then open the extrude command. Now I can tell you about the difference between sketches and profiles. Profiles are used to create geometry. When you're creating three-dimensional geometry, the profile has to be a closed loop. There are four closed loops in the sketch, but you can only call a closed loop a profile if it's used to create geometry. The reason I'm making this distinction is to let you know that you can draw anything you want on the sketch, like construction geometry and closed loops. Closed loops can be used to generate three-dimensional geometry, and you don't have to use all the closed loops on the sketch. The extrude command is active, but as you can see, none of the rectangles have been selected. That's because Inventor gives you the option of selecting a profile or profiles you want to use. When this happens, the extrude command is automatically set to the profile selection mode. So you have to select a profile. Click inside the upper left rectangle, and the lower right, and then use a mouse gesture to apply the command. As expected, two rectangular solid bodies were created from the operation. Now edit the extrusion. Right click on extrusion 1, and then select edit feature. Once a feature has been created from a sketch profile, the profile selection mode does not automatically turn on, so you have to manually turn it on. To do this, click the profile button. Now select the upper right rectangle. Once you've done that, apply the operation. The difference between sketches and profiles is sketches are used to draw and constrain profiles, and profiles are used to generate three-dimensional geometry. The geometry on a sketch can consist of profiles and non-profile geometry like construction geometry. In the last lesson we created three separate pieces within a single part file and I mentioned that we created three solid bodies. I just want to take a minute to clarify the difference between solid bodies and features with multiple separate pieces. This is actually a single feature with three separate pieces and not three solid bodies. If you expand the solid bodies folder, you can see that there's only one solid body named solid 1. If you expand solid 1, you can see extrusion 1, and beneath that is sketch 1. One method of creating assemblies is to create all the parts in a single part file, and then you separate them into an assembly file. This process is covered in detail in the Assemblies and Advanced Concepts course. So for now, I just want you to be able to identify the number of solid bodies in the file. So we'll need to create a second body. Open the 2D sketch command, and then select a face on the extrusion. Inventor has already created a profile, so we'll use it to create a new body. Finish the sketch, and then open the extrude command. If you recall, the extrude command can join, cut, intersect, and make a new solid. If you want to make a new body, you have to select New Solid. Select this option, and then apply the command. Now if you look in the Solid Bodies folder, you can see that there are two solid bodies in the folder, and the number 2 indicates that there are two bodies.
The solid modeling course covers single body parts, and as I said, the Assemblies and Advanced Concepts course covers multi body parts. But I also know that I've probably sparked your interest in working with solid bodies, so I'll give you a little more information. One thing you might be wondering is if you apply a join operation to the part, which body is the feature added to? The answer is this. If you select a surface on a body to create a sketch, the sketch is a child of that body. So the feature created from the sketch will be a member of the same body. In other words, if I select this surface to create a sketch, the surface is part of Solid 2. So the feature created from the sketch will be part of Solid 2. If I select this surface to create a sketch, the feature created from the sketch will be part of Solid 1. You might try doing this with this file before you proceed to the next lesson. And as I said, it's covered in detail in the Assemblies and Advanced Concepts course, so there's no need to master solid bodies at this time.